magandang umaga sa ating lahat. Um, kami nga pala ang group, group for um, nag-uulat patungkol sa Contemporary Global Governments. Ako nga pala si Altea Carriazo de los Santos. So hello guys, uh, for today is, I'll discuss to you what is Contemporary Global Governance. So what is Global Governance? Uh, global Governance can be uh, understood as a framework of institutions like rules, norms, and procedures that facilitate collective action and cooperation among countries and other, uh, other sectors. So, uh, governance, uh, global governance, it encompasses a wide range of issues including economic development, trade, human rights, and envi environmental protection, and peace and security. That objective is to address global challenges that transcend national borders and require collective resolutions. So, I'll give you an example of global governance. Uh, example of global governance is the United Nations or UN. The system is comprises a range of specialized agencies and programs, funds that work on issues uh, such as health, education, uh, climate change, and peace and security. So, the second is the World Trade Organization or WTO. A sets rules for international trade and resolves disputes between member countries. So, the third is the International Monetary Fund or IMF. Uh, it provides financial assistance to countries uh, uh, a facing economic crisis and promotes international monetary cooperation. And the uh, fourth is the Paris Agreement on Climate Change. Uh, it establishes a framework for countries to work together to reduce uh, greenhouse gas emissions and mitigate the impacts of climate change. The fifth is the Universal Declar Declaration of Human Rights. sets out uh, fundamental human rights that are recognized and protected by countries around the world. So, next topic po tayo is the seat of government. So, what is the seat of government? <coughs> Excuse me po. Uh, the seat of government is the building complex of buildings or the city from which a government exercise its authority. So, in most countries, the nation's capital is also seat of its government. Thus, that the city is appropriately referred to as the national seat of government. The terms are not however, uh, but completely synonyms as some countries. So, seat of government differs from the capital. Uh, the Netherlands, for example, uh, as the Amsterdam as its capital, but the Hague is the seat of government. And the Philippines with Manila as its capital, but metropolitan area of the sum, of the same name or Metro Manila, also known as as national capital or region, or so to call NCR, is the seat of governments. <coughs> so, this is the four about seat of government: a uh, secretariat building, a uh, new in New Delhi. Uh, the second is Malacanang Palace in Manila. And the uh, third is the Capitol in Washington, Washington D.C. And the fourth is Palace of Westminster in London. Uh, so, government. Uh, punta po tayo sa government. Uh, first is, has the sovereignty over its own territory. And the second is, deci decisions. Uh, decisions conflict a resolutions, countrywide planning and development. Our, our plans or plans are done through the different government institutions. So the third is <coughs> activities of the civil societies like the private enterprises, churches, healthcare providers, professional and business organizations, and non-government organizations are supplementary to the government. So how does globalization attack? governments. So, what is globalization? So, what is globalization? Globalization is the word used to describe the growing interdependence 
of the world's economies. Cultures and populations brought about by cross-border trade in goods and services, technology and flows of investments, people and information. Countries have built economic partnership to facilitate these movements over many centuries. But the term gained popularity after the Cold War in the early 1990s as this cooperative arrangement shaped modern everyday life. So, what is the effect of globalization to government? So, the first is the traditional challenges. In the traditional challenges, we have uh, three types of challenges. So, the first is external intervention by other countries. So, what is external intervention by other countries? The external inter in intervention by other countries is refers to the involvement of one or more foreign nations in the internal affairs of another country. This intervention can take various forms including diplomatic, econ e diplomatic economic, military, or humanitarian actions. So the motivation for external intervention, intervention can vary and may include that this first is humanitarian reasons. Countries may intervene to provide aid, relief, or support during natural disasters, Con conflicts, or humanitarian crises to alleviate suffering and save lives. And the second is political or ideolog ideological reasons. Some nations may intervene in, in the domestic politics or another country to promote a particular politic ideology, support a friendly government, or influence the outcome of elections. Then the third is Security concerns, exter uh, security concerns external countries might intervene to protect their own security interests. This can uh, involve military actions to <clears throat> combat terrorism, prevent the proliferation, uh, say, prevent the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction or counter perceived threats and the uh, fourth is economic interest so what is economic interest countries may intervene to protect or advance their economic interest such as securing access to natural resources markets or trade routes so the five is is geopolitical competition uh, regional powers may engage in intervention to expand their influence, counter the influence of rivals, or establish a strategic presence in, in a region. So the sixth is human rights and democracy. Uh, democracy promotion. Uh, some nations may intervene to support human rights, democracy, and uh, the rule of law in other countries, often through diplomatic and non-military means. Yun for yung ano, external. So, we have a tackle to the other types of challenges. And the second is internal political challenges or refers to the issues, conflicts, or problems what a country or government faces with, within its own borders, uh, primarily related to its political system and governance. Uh, the first is, I, w uh, I will give you the example. The first is corruption. The presence of corruption within the government or political system can erade public trust, hinder economic development, and undermine the rule of law. And the second is political instability. So, political instability, frequent challenge changes in leadership, political unrest, or power struggles can destabilize a country and lead to uncertain uncertainty. So the third is uh, ethnic and religious divisions. When a country uh, has diverse ethnic or religious groups, political challenges can arise from tensions, conflicts, or discrimination among these groups. And the fourth is weak governance. So weak governance in ineffective or corrupt governance can lead to a lack of public services, infrastructure, 
and accountability which can cause dis dissatisfaction among the population. So the fifth is economic issues. Economic issues is economic challenges such as a uh, high inflation, unemployment, or income in in inequality and can lead to political unrest and protests. Then the sixth is human rights violations. Violation of civil liberties, freedom of speech, and other human rights can lead to domestic and international criticism and challenges. So the seven is electoral fraud, uh, concerns about the fairness and integrity of elections can undermine the legitimacy of the government and lead to political political instability. So the eight, pang eight is uh, uh, in inadequate infrastructure for infrastructure such as a uh, lack of reliable transportation and utilities can hinder economic development and political stability so pang nine is social unrest uh, protests demonstrations and civil uh, disobedience or disobedience can pose challenges to the government and may lead to demands for political change so, Fang 10 is uh, secessionist movements, same regions or groups within a country may seek independence, leading to internal political challenges related to sovereignty and territorial integrity. So, the, pang uh, the third, uh, the types of challenges is the regional organizations can challenge uh, state autonomy in several ways. So, I will give you the examples. Uh, the first is su supranational authority. So, some regional organizations like the European Union or EU have supranational authority which means they can make decisions that bind member states. Potentially, uh, limiting their sovereignty, uh, member states may have to adhere to common policies laws or regulations set by the regional organizations even if they conflict with their national laws and the second is trade and eco economics so economic agreements so regional economic uh, organizations such as trade blocks and custom unions uh, can require member states to conform to common trade policies uh, tariffs or tariffs and regulations this can limit a country's ability to set its own trade policies or protect its industries and the third is security and defense defense alliances regional security organizations like nato or north atlantic Tre treaty organization can require member states to participate in collective defense efforts uh, potentially involving military interventions this may limit a country's autonomy in deciding when and how to use its military forces so so the fourth is human rights and and legal standards uh, in regional human rights organizations such as the the inter-american court of human rights can pass judgments that bind member states to uphold certain human rights standards even if they conflict with a country's national laws or practices. And the fifth is diplomatic and conflict resolution mechanisms. Uh, regional organizations often provide conflict resolution mechanisms that can supersede a country's sovereignty in resolving disputes. For example, um, the African Union has a role, uh, a has played a role in mediating conflicts and crises in Africa impacting the autonomy of its member states in managing these issues so pang six is regulations and harmonization regional uh, in regional organizations often aim to harmonize regulations and standards across member states to facilitate cooperation and integration this can limit a state's ability to set its own regulations in areas like environmental standards, product safety, or public health. Uh, and the uh, seven is financial and economic policies. So regional organizations may influence member states' economic policies, fiscal responsibility, and monetary coordination, which can affect a country's autonomy in managing its economy. And the eight is legal and judicial system. 
uh, regional organizations may establish common courts and legal systems that can overrule national legal decisions, particularly in areas where there are disputes about interpretations of regional agreements of, or conventions. And the uh, second challenges from national identity or movements typically involve issues related to the identity, culture, and aspiration of specific national ethnic or cultural groups within a country. These challenges can manifest in various ways, may include We are tackled to the second challenges. The, cha the second challenges is challenges from national identity or movements. Typically involve issues related to the identity culture and aspirations of specific national, ethnic, or cultural groups within a country. These challenges can manifest in various ways and may include, uh, for example, first is sessionist, um, sessionist movements. Uh, some regions or groups within a country may seek independence or autonomy challenging the nation states territorial integrity example include catalonia in spain or quebec in canada and the second is ethnic or cultural tensions uh, national uh, national identity challenges uh, may arise from ethnic or cultural differences within a country uh, these tensions can lead to discrimination conflicts or Demands for greater recognitions and rights. And the third is language and cultural preservation. Uh, movements may push for the preservation and promotion of their language, culture, or heritage, uh, often in response to perceived assimilation or cultural erosions. And the fourth is auton autonomy or self-governance. Some groups may demand greater autonomy or self governance within a country to protect their cultural or political identity. This can lead to debates about federalism or devolution of powers. And the fifth is nationalism. Nationalist movements can challenge the existing political order by emphasizing national identity and sovereignty they may advocate for stricter immigration policies and protectionist trade measures or assistance to supranational, uh, supranational organizations. And the sixth is religious identity. Uh, challenges uh, related to religious identity can, can occur when religious, religious groups seek greater influence or recognition in the pol political and social spheres. This may lead to debates about the role of re religion in government and society. And the seventh is historical uh, injustice. Uh, movements may demand acknowledgement uh, and redress for historical injustices such as uh, colonization, of oppres uh, oppression, or discrimination, which can have uh, lasting impacts of national identity. And the eighth is mon uh, minor uh, minority rights, uh, protection of the rights of minority group within a national is a often of often a uh, central issue monitor um, minority groups may seek uh, may seek equal treatment uh, present representation and protection of their cultural and political rights and the name is immigration and uh, multiculturalism debates over uh, immigration policies uh, assimilation and multi uh, multi multiculturalism can challenge a country's nation uh, countries National identity, these issues can resolve around question of who belongs and what values define the nation. And the then is identity and po politics. Uh, identity and politics. So, yun yeah. National identity can became, uh, become a central theme in political discourage with political parties or leaders using it to mobilize support or rally against perceived threats to the nation's identity. we are tackled to the third challenges is the global economics so refers to the study and analysis of economic activities uh, interactions and relationships on a worldwide scale it encompasses the following key and yeah, encompasses scale a worldwide scale aspects 
example, uh, we have an example. First is international trade. Uh, global economics uh, examines the exchange of goods and services across national borders, including trade policies, uh, and policies and trade agreements. The second is international finance. This area uh, explores the flow of capital, foreign exchange markets, international investment, and the management of international financial institutions. So the third is globalization. So global economics assesses uh, the increasing inter connectedness of economies, uh, including the movements of information, technology, and people across borders. And the fourth is multinational corporations. corporations. Uh, it studies the operations and impact of multinational companies that operate in multi multiple countries affecting production, uh, affecting production, employment, and trade. So the fifth is global supply chains. Uh, analysis of the complex networks that connect pro producers, uh, suppliers, and consumers across the globe, impacting the efficiency and resil uh, resil uh, resilience resilience of industries. Fung six is global economic institutions. It involves the role and functions of international organizations like the International Monetary Fund (IMF). World Bank and World Trade Organization or WTO in shaping globalization, uh, global economic policies and stability. The seventh is development economics. Uh, examines the disparities in economic development uh, among countries and strategies for addressing poverty and inequality on a global scale. Uh, eight is economic crisis and uh, contagion. Studies how financial crises such as the global financial crisis of 2008 can spread across borders uh, affecting multiple economies. And the nine is global economic inequality. Analysis of income and wealth disparities both within and between countries and the implications for social and economic stability. And the uh, function is sustainable development uh, evaluates the environmental and social dimensions of economic growth, and the challenges of achieving sustainability in a global context. And the fourth challenges, uh, the fourth uh, challenges is global social movements are uh, referred to collective, often grassroots efforts that aim to address and advocate for social, political, economic or environmental change on a, on, on a global scale. Uh, these movements uh, typically involve people from various countries, regions, and backgrounds who unite around common causes and issues. Some, uh, uh, we have uh, some uh, examples. Uh, we have uh, trans, trans, uh, uh, transnational nature, uh, global social movements, transcend national boundaries, and draw participants from different countries. Uh, they are interconnected and share information and strategies globally. Two is diverse goals. These movements can focus on a wide range of issues, including human rights, uh, human rights, environmental protection, economic justice, gender equality, peace, and more. They often challenge uh, chain existing power structures and advocate for progressive change. And the third is use of technology. Global social movements uh, leverage modern communication tools and social media to mobilize supporters, uh, spread their messages, and coordinate actions uh, across borders. Uh, fourth is advocacy and awareness. They often seek to raise awareness about their causes and influence public opinion, uh, policymakers, and international organi organizations. The fifth is civil this uh, disobedi disobedience and protest. These movements may employ various forms of nonviolent protest, civil dis uh, dis uh, civil uh, disobedience, uh, and direct action to draw attention to their concerns and apply pressure for change. The sixth is networks and coalition uh, coalitions coalitions global uh, coalitions. Uh, Global social movements form networks and coalitions with like-minded organizations and activi uh, activi activists, activists to amplify their impact 
and full resources. And the seventh is uh, inclusivity. They strive to inclusive and diverse, uh, welcoming people from various backgrounds, cultures, and perspectives. For example, of global social movements uh, include climate change, activism, uh, movements like Fridays for, for, for Future, Fridays for Future, led by Greta Thunberg, have mobilized millions of people worldwide to demand actions on climate change and human rights campaigns, movements, movements advocating for human rights such as Amnesty, Amnesty International and Human Rights, um, Human Rights work, uh, Watch, work across borders to address violation and abuses, um, anti-globalization movements, protests against globalization and corporate power, as seen in the demonstration against the World Trade Organization or WTO in the late 1990s. So, women rights movements, uh, movements like the global women's marches, uh, marches have highlighted gender, gender equality issues and women's rights on an international scale. So, social justice campaigns, movements advocating for racial or racial and social justice, such as the Black Lives Matter movement, have had a global impact and solidarity. Uh, global social movements have the potential to influence international policies, uh, shape public discourse, and drive changes. I uh, drive change at a global level. They often challenges established norms and power structures, and play a crucial role in addressing global issues. So don't put in uh, don't put in for ties uh, effect of globalization to governments. Uh, triggers competition or conflict among countries on matters such as economic policy, political systems, human rights, environmental concerns. Mm, other countries' interest, own country, interests, uh, effect of globalization to governments. Governments are now disappeared and are dealing with many stakeholders uh, horizontally. May nakalagay po tayo na charge is international organization, uh, market, subnational political authorities, and civil society. And the next is effect of globalization to governments is citizens, civil society, organizations, and corporations are now seeking opportunities beyond the borders of their home country. At the same time, the local market faces competition with the influx of foreign players. So, nakalagay po dyan is country government, uh, support business, seeking materials markets abroad, migration policies outward and inward, people flow, new, show, new social and cultural dynamics issues, managing local versus foreign competition. So, yung pinakalagay sa may charts din po. So, what is international relation? The collective interaction of relationship of the international community. Um, key players include the international or national of states, intergovernment organization, non-governmental government organization, and multinational corporation. When we say state or nation and state, ito yung study of between um, interaction between countries or between different countries while the intergovernmental organization ito yung mga international na bumubuo ng state upang tugunan yung mga pangkaraniwang issue while the yung halimbawa nito is yung United Nations na nagbibigay daan ng corporation sa mga issue tulad ng tungkol sa kalamidad at karapatang pantao and non-governmental Organization naman is among NGOs like An Amnesty International o Doctor Without Borders ay nag operate sa buong mundo. Um, Nag-advocate para sa iba't ibang mga layunin tulad ng karapatang pantao, kalusugan, at pangagalaga sa kalikasan. And the last one is multi-corporations. Um, at yung mga company tulad ng Coca-Cola or Coca-Cola na nag operate sa iba't ibang bansa at nag invest sa iba't ibang bansa. Katulad din ng MACDO. As you can see, yung MACDO is nasa Philippines at makikita mo rin siya sa iba't ibang bansa. So, my question is, or give 
examples of multi-corporate corporations na company sa uh, na nakikita nyo na meron dito sa Pilipinas na meron din sa iba't ibang bansa. Um, the institution that govern interaction relationship or relation or concerned with peace treaties and military alliance, social economic growth, and overall global economy. Government of countries around the world participate in this different institution. Um, next is, um, these institutions are the main player. Players inter international relations. Let's at um let us look at each one of them. The next one, institution of government, international relation. Um, United Nations wide network of international organization, treaties and co conventions. Um, it was found in or it was found in 1946 and now has 93 member of states. Um, parang ito yung main, main function nila, which is help maintain world peace and security. Parang sila yung nag-maintain ng world peace sa bawat countries and help solve economic, social, culture, and humanitarian interact, international and developing relations among nations. Parang nagde-develop or dinedevelop nila yung mga relationship between other countries and bring countries together to meet the U UN's purpose and goals. Um, United Nations is also known as a word, the word court or the judicial body of United Nations settle international disputes, um, which is the International Court or Justi of Justice, which is ICG, offered referred to as a word court. It is a significant institution within the United Nations that plays crucial role in governing. Parang it is a judicial body of United Nations. Um, it is the primary um, primary character. It is a settled international disputes. Setting international disputes, it is the one of the primary function of ICJ. It is it is to settle legal disputes between states. It states that are parties of ICJ is its status can be submit case voluntary. Parang something and something continuous case are referred to CII ICJ um, by mutual cons consent of involved parties. Um, North Atlantic Treaty and Military Alliance, at inter intergovernment defense or treaty or military, collective self-defense, and attack to all member nations. Parang dito, it is yung, yung NATO ay isang mahalagang institution na namumuno sa international na ugnayan. Lalo na sa konteksto ng mga kasunduang pangkapayapaan, military alliance, narito ang mga detalyang or papaliwanag kung anilang tungkulin or tungkulin ng NATO which is the interna or intergovernment defense treaty para yung NATO ay isang governmental alliance na itinatag para sa mutual defense or yung ang mga member ng organization ay nagkakasundo na magtulungan sa depensang aggressions or papakita ng pagkakaisa, kooperasyon sa pagitan ng mga bansa. And collective self-defense, isa sa pangunahing prinsipyo ng NATO. Ayon sa Article 5 ng NATO Treaty, ay ang pag-atake ng isang miyembro ng bansa ay itinuturing na pag-atake sa miyembro ng organization. Ayon sa prinsipyo ng mutual defense na ito ay nagpapakita ng pangako ng mga miyembro na nagbibigay tulong ano mang miyembro ang mga anib. Parang um, next is the foundation of collective security. Um, ang pagtatag ng, ng NATO noong 1940 ay isang mahalagang hakbang patungo sa collective security ng mga bansa. Sa pamag pamamagitan ng pagbuo ng malakas na military alliance, nakokontrol nito ang posibleng umatake at nagpapalakas or posibleng umatake sa mga bansa na nasa organization ng NATO. Next 
uh, peace treaties and military alliance, Red Cross, which is, ang Red Cross ay isang pandaigdigang organization na or organization na nagbibigay ng tulong sa mga taong naapektuhan ng digmaan, alitan at kalamidad. Narit um ito yung mga kanilang tungkulin which is sa emergency relief. Um yung Red, Red Cross ay nagbibigay ng agarang tulong sa mga apektadong populasyon ng or na pinsalan ng digmaan, alitan, likas na kalamidad tulad ng bagyo, lindol, at ano man, kasama dito yung pagbigay ng tirahan, pagkain, malinis sa tubig at medical na tulong sa mga naapektuhan na tao. Andito naman yung medical assistance. Ito nagbibigay sila ng med medical na pangangailangan at suporta sa sugatan at may sakit. Um, sa mga lugar na, dig na ng digmaan at sa oras ng kalamidad. Um, nandito din yung res disaster response and preparedness. Ang organization ay mahal, may mahalagang papel sa pagtugon ng paghahanda at sa kalamidad. Nagbibigay ng tulong sa mga sa saan yun ang relief supply, medical na mga team at expertise upang maidsa ang apekto ng kalamidad tulad ng lindol, baha at pandemya. On social economic growth, Doctor Without Borders, we emergency healthcare in disaster areas. Parang yung Doctor Without Borders or nagbibigay ng libreng emergency healthcare sa mga lugar na sinalanta ng kalamidad at sa mga digmaan, nagdadala ng tulong medical sa mga taong nanganganib. Ano man mga kanilang lahi, relihiyon o politika na paniniwala. Um, halimbawa nito is yung kadalasang nagpapadala ng medical team sa mga lugar na apektado na digmaan, likas na kalamidad, at sa mga lugar na apektado ng mga outbreak na sakit. And yung Oxfam naman is a fight from, it is the, ito yung lumalaban sa mga kagutuman or kagutuman at sakit na pamamagitan ng pagbibigay ng, pagbibigay ng pagkain, malinis sa tubig, at servisyong pangkalusugan sa mga kalamid or sa mga komodidad ng na nahihirapan. So sinusuportahan ng sinusuportahan din ng mga Oxfam ang proyektong pangkaunlaran upang itaguyod ang mga komodidad mula sa kahirapan. At Amnesty International advocates of human rights and politic political prisoner. prisoners. At nagtutulak para sa karapatang pantao at buong, sa buong mundo na, na nakatuon sa mga isyu tulad ng kalayaan ng pananali kalayaan pampo pampolitikang pangapi at hindi mahatarungang paglilitis para sila um sila yung tumutulong sa mga tao na hindi tama yung pag pag ano sa mga kunwari parang sila yung nag-iinvestiga or nag or nag-iinvestiga sa mga nakukulong na dapat hindi naman nakulong kasi nga hindi naman nila ginawa para sila yung tumutulong sa mga taong napakulong or nag kinulong dahil or kinulong kasi kahit wala namang ginagawang masama and the save the children save children or tumutulong sa sa mga bata na makakuha ng servisyong pangkalusugan, edukasyon at protection laban sa pangamin. Ang Save Children ay may mga programa na programa para sa mapabuti ang nutrition ng mga bata. Magbibigay ng edukasyon, tumugon sa mga emhensyong or apektado ng mga bata. Halimbawa nito ay tataguyod sa pansamantalang paaralan sa mga kapwa na mga biktima sa dig digmaan, nagsisiguro sa mga batang nasalanta ng assess of education, assess sa edukasyon. Sila yung nagbibigay ng nutritional na suporta sa mga komodidad na nagugutom um, nagdi or nagdi-deliver ng servisyong pangkalusugan sa mga bata sa mga lugar na apektido, apektado ng digmaan at nagbibigay ng psychological psychosocial support sa mga batang apektado 
sa mga dingmata nila. <laughs> Um, ang, ang mga organisasyon ito ay nagpapakita ng mahalagang papel sa international na institution sa pagsugpo ng global or ng global na mga hamon, pagtataguyod sa kapakanan ng lipunan at pagtu, pagtulong sa ekonomiyang pag-unlad sa pamamagitan ng pagbuo ng mga komunidad na masigla, matalino at may kakayahan. Ang Global Economy World Trade Organization, ang organization for The Bering Trade or provides forum for government or negotiate agreement and settle trade disputes. Parang ang World Trade Organization and or WTO ay isang institution na namumuno sa international na ugnayan sa pandaidigang ekonomiya. Ang pangunahin layo nito ay ang pagpapalawak ng kalakasan or pamamagitan ng pagbigay ng platforma sa mga sa mga pamahalaan pamahalaan upang makasunduan sa kasun, sa mga kasunduan ng pagkalak pangkalakalan at solusyon ang mga alitang pangkalakalan narito yung mga tungkulin nila or pag papalawak ng kalakalan ang WTO ay nag ang WTO ay nagpapa or nagpapa gitan sa mga negosyo negosyasyon sa pagitan ng miyembro ng ba bawasan ng mga hadlang kalaparan tawipa o kota naglalayong itaguyod ang malayang malayang at bukas na kalakalan sa buong mundo paglutas ng mga alitang pankalakalan nagbibigay ito ng formal at instruct instructura It's instructuradong proseso para sa miyembro ng bansa upang malutas ang mga alinmang pang or ang mga alitang pangkalahalan. Sila yung nagbibigay ng operate or sila yung nagbibigay ng trade rules, world trade or economic treaty between the US, Canada and Mexico. November 18 became United States Mexico Canada Agreement. We trade between USA, Canada and Mexico. Yung North or ang North American Trade Agreement ay isang ekonomikong kasunduan sa pamamagitan ng Mexico, Canada at United States. Noong November 28, ang NAF NAFTA or NAFTA ay naging United States Mexico Canada Agreement na nagpapatuloy sa layunin ng malayang kalakalan sa pagitan ng USA, Canada at Mexico. Malayang kalakalan, ang pangunahing layuning ng NAFTA. Um, ay ang pagpapalakas ng malayang kalakalan sa pagitan ng USA, Canada, and Mexico ay pinagbiyan nito ang malayang paglipat ng kalakalan at serbisyo sa tatlong bansa. Parang pinapayagan ng ng Mexico, Canada, yung paglipat ng mga produkto ng Canada sa kanilang bansa. Parang ganun yung sinasabi ng WT, um, WTO sa USNCA parang pinapayagan ng Canada na mag na or pinapayagan ng Canada and USA na yung me, yung mga product ng Mexico is map binebenta din sa kanila parang nagpapalitan lang sila ng ano or pinapayagan nilang bawat or sa kanilang tatlo pinapayagan nila yung mga produkto nila na maibenta or maging ano sa sa kanilang mismo, sa kanilang tatlo. Um, halimbawa, dahil sa NAFTA or ngayon ay USMCA, ang mga produkto at serbisyo mula sa Estados Unidos, Canada at Mexico, or which is not Estados Unidos, which is United States, Canada at Mexico, ay maaaring ipasa o ibenta sa kahit saang bansa sa tatlong ito na walang malaking buwis o limitasyon. Yun na nga, yung parang lahat ng product nila, pwede nilang ibenta kahit saan doon. Halimbawa nito ang isang kumpanyang Amerikano ay maaaring magbenta ng kanilang produkto sa Canada o Mexico na walang mahigpit na regulasyon o mataas na ta or mataas na tax na nagpapalaka sa pandaigdigang kalakalan at nagtutulungan sa pag-unlad ng ekonomiya ng mga bansa at kasapi sa kasunduang ito. As individual, we can contribute to international relations in 
many ways such as being aware of current events, voting during election, humanitarian causes, being responsible citizen. Individual contributions to international relations can be meaningful and impact even on small scale. Conversely, international relations, front learners, relations, relations help improve our lives by helping address many global issues such as human rights, environmental protection, property reduction, education, healthcare, peace, and security. International relations play a crucial role in addressing global issues. They facilitate cooperation among nations to tackle challenges like climate change, conflict, resolution, and global health crisis by promoting diplomacy and collaboration international relations contribute to a more stable and prosperous world, ultimately improving the quality of our people across the globe. Internationalism The principle of our practice of nations acting and working together. Nation 1, 2, 3, 4. Internationalism, a belief and or a movement to promote better cooperation among nations in the following aspect economic, political, social. Economic, this involves the promotion of international trade, investment, and economic integration. Social, internationalism encourages collaboration on social issues such as human rights, public health, and education. Political, it calls for nations to work together on political matters including conflict resolution, peacekeeping, and the prevention of armed conflicts. These forms of cooperation aim to create a more interconnected and interdependent world where nations collaborate to achieve common goals and address shared problems. Internationalism Fred Halliday, an internationalist, defines internationalism as the idea that we both are and should be part of a broader community than that the nation state we belong to. Halliday's true concept of internationalism, hegemonic internationalism, revolutionary internationalism, liberal internationalism. Internationalism, a concept which contends that conflict arises within societies due to international factors and alliances. Example, French Revolution, Feminism, Environmentalism. Hegemonic Internationalism, a concept that the world is being integrated based on an equal term with one nation dominating over other nations. Example, British Empire from 16th to 18th century. Hegemonic internationalism, this concept refers to the dominance or leadership of single powerful nation or entity in the shaping and controlling international relations. Liberal internationalism, a concept that promotes the achievement of common goals such as world peace, poverty, and sustainable development through greater cooperation among nations. Example, UN Sustainable Development Goals, Healthcare, Life-Saving Causes of Red Cross. Liberal internationalism, this concept emphasizes the importance of international cooperation, diplomacy, and the rule of law in managing and resolving global issues. Globalism, from the world itself, the global. Yung buong mundo, lahat ng nations are connected. Um, magkakaisa-isa sila. And para makapag-make ng decision, like ano, sa Parang sa family, hindi pwedeng ikaw lang yung magde-decide. Lahat kayo mag-share ng mga ano, ano ba tawag doon? Lahat kayo mag-share ng mga own opinion and maggagawa kayo ng decision. And 
Wait. For example, yung policy makings sa globalism and decisions should be planned internationally. Ganun po siya. According to a American political scientist, Joseph Nye, there are four distinct dimensions of globalism. First is economic, military, environmental, social, and cultural. Joseph Nye is a university distinguished service professor, emeritus, and former dean of the Harvard Kennedy School of Government. Are the four distinct dimensions of globalism. First, economic globalism. Flows of goods, services, and capital. Examples, export and import of goods and e-commerce. Import and ex export. Import yung manggagaling dito sa Pilipinas at idadala sa iba-ibang bansa. And yung export naman, yung galing sa ibang bansa na dadanin dito sa Pilipinas. For example, yung Pilipinas, nag-i-import tayo sa iba-ibang bansa ng mga foods, bananas, ganyan, mga iba-ibang products. And ganun din sila. For example, yung China, ini-export nila dito yung mga technologies, kahit anong mga gamit, na mga, madami yun, mga made of Chinas. Yun po. And military globalism, deployment of potential conflict or threats of force of war. Example, balance of terror between the United States and the Soviet Union during the Cold War. Military. Ito naman po yung ano, nagtutulungan yung mga nations sa mga sa term na military yung for example may bansang nahihirapan yung nation na ano like yung Pilipinas yung yung ginagawa ng China na pagangkin dun sa pagmamayari ng Pilipinas nag for example nag magpapadala yung United States ng mga military to help the Philippines. Ganun po. Environmental globalism. Activities such as manufacturing travel, transport of goods, utilization of natural resources that pollute the land, sea, and air. Example, global warming. Sa environmental globalism naman, dito nagtutulong-tulong lahat ng nations para ma-prevent yung global warming. Yun po. And, sa social and cultural globalism, movements of ideas, information, and people. Example, fusion in cuisine, passion, and arts. Social. Ito naman po yung, ano, nagkaka, nagkakaroon ng mga, ano yung, ma, lahat ng bansa lahat ng nation na for example yung K-pop ganun na nagugustuhan siya ng mga ibang nations like Philippines ng Japan ganun po and yung sa Pilipinas naman yung FB19 pinapanood na din siya ng ibang bansa yun po here's the difference between internationalism and globalism Internationalism supports individualism of nations, focuses on nation-to-nation -nation ties without impending on the sovereignty of the nations, stresses solidarity and cooperation among nations to benefit one another. Common interests are more important than individual differences. So globalism treats nations as global or a single unit, interconnectedness of the world, ideology based on the belief that people, goods, and information should be able to cross national borders unrestricted, 
It is not universal. Some parts of the world experience connectedness more than others. So, yung internationalism, hindi po siya, ano, ito po yung nag, sinusupport po nila yung bansa sa bansa, nation to nation, sinusupport, nagsusuportahan sila. And, sa internationalism may sari-sariling desisyon lahat ng bansa and sa globalism naman po hindi po hindi po sariling desisyon desisyon ng lahat ng dito magmamake ng isang desisyon ng lahat ng bansa bali magtutulong-tulungan po sa globalism And sa globalism, connected lahat ng nation and magiging isa. Magiging isa lahat ng nation. Institutions that govern international relations are concerned with peace treaties and military alliance. Ito yung United Nations North Atlantic Treaty Organization or NATO. NATO, yung isang organization na dito nag tutulungan yung mga bansa para para makip yung peace. Mag, para ma-prevent yung mga wars, yung pagsasakop-sakop, ganyan. Yun po. Parang ano siya, Parang ito yung prat ng mga bansa para magtulungan and hindi mag-away-away. Social and economic growth. Yung Red Cross, North American, Doctors Without Borders, Amnesty Free Trade Agreement, World Trade International, Save the Children Organization, and Oxfam. Dito po nagtutulong-tulong yung mga bansa kapag kailangan ng kailangan ng doktor. Ganun po. Bali, kapag kulang ng doktor sa isang bansa, yun, magpapadala po ang isa pang bansa ng mga doktors dun sa nangangailangan. And, Global Economy, North American Free Trade Agreement, and World Trade Organization. Trade. Dito naman po, Global Economy, dito nagtitrade ng mga mga products, mga supplies po dito sa organization na to. Another difference of internationalism and globalism. Globalism focuses on a fully integrated world, open economically, whereas internationalism emphasizes collaboration between nations while retaining their individual identities. So, sa internationalism, makikita nyo po dito na connected lang po sila and sinusupport lang po nila yung isa't isa. Pero sa globalism naman, dito po yung magiging isa lahat ng lahat ng bansa decision ng lahat dun po isa lang hindi tulad sa internationalism may kanya-kanyang decision lahat ng nation dito po gagawa sila ng isang decision para ano po dito nagtutulong-tulungan din and magiging isa, one world. Yun po. And, on the other hand, yung globalism po, nakakatulong ito sa lahat ng nation. Kasi dito po, mape-prevent lahat ng wars para hindi mag-away-away lahat ng mga bansa, hindi magsakap. Ganun po. Thank you.